Because if we read the Bible, that that just makes you so happy. Because everything for you is so perfect. You made this world perfect. And you made this world for us to live on. And Lord, you are so perfect. We're not perfect. We just make progress. And Lord, every time when we sin and we pray, you can always forgive us. And everything that you do for us is so perfect. And the last thing I have to say, we just make everything for you so good because we need to show you that that we can be good and we can just not sin. It's so hard to not sin. But if we try to not sin, we'll be nicer and nicer and nicer. And we'll sit and pray. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.
Hallelujah. So much more. How about we talk about the lights and the candles? Lights and candles are used to give light. When a room is full of darkness, it is dark. But if you light a single match in the dark room, the room is light. There may be more darkness, but the light overpowers it. We are that light. We can be the single light in the world of darkness. We must share our light with the world so the light increases. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand and it gives life to all in the house. Matthew 5, 14 to 15. I love the lights. They're so pretty. Let's put more lights on. I never knew. I guess I never looked at it that we are the lights for God. Exactly. Let's put these bells on now. The bell rings out to guide the lost sheep back to the fold, signifying that all are precious in the eyes of the Lord. Jesus is our shepherd, and he laid down his life for us so that we may spend eternity with him in heaven. He is calling us to follow him through his word. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave them the ninety-nine on the mountains and go and search for the one that went astray? Matthew 18, 12. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. John 10, 11. The bells sound so beautiful. I just love to listen to them. Jesus is our shepherd. We are his sheep. He would go looking for me. Who wants candy canes? Let's put this on next. Me! <laughs> the, the candy cane symbolizes multiple things. If you hold it upright, it looks like a shepherd's curve. The, shepherd, the shepherds were so of the few, the few people they were able to see the baby Jesus in Bethlehem. Turn the candy cane upside down. It looks like a J. Jesus starts with the letter J. The colors, the colors of the candy cane are also symbolic. Red represents the blood that Jesus shed for us on the cross, and the white represents the purity of Jesus. The, the, there are candy canes with three small red stripes showing their energy. Three stripes symbolize the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Who knew that this delicious, simple candy was so profoundly symbolic of our Lord Jesus Christ and his simple birth? And she will bring forth the Son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Matthew 1 20. These are delicious. I love this part of Christmas. It means so many things. This seems to be a reason why we do everything that we do. I can see now that this stuff has a meaning. I'm so glad that you all are changing your mind about these things. So I have some stars next to put on the tree. The star is a heavenly sign of prophecy fulfilled ages ago. The shining hope for all mankind. The star led the wise men to find baby Jesus. These wise men traveled many miles following a star in the sky. The star was their guiding light to the Savior. God was the wise men's travel agent in sorts, leading them to the greatest destination in the man, the Savior. We know we know we now have his word as our guiding law to lead us to be with him in heaven. Are you going to follow him and behold the star which they had seen in the east went before them? Till it came and stood over there the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Matthew 2, 9-10. The star was their guiding light. They were able to follow the star to Jesus. That must have been an amazing journey. I'm glad that we have the guiding light to help lead us. Yes, God's word leads us to Jesus. Well, I think our tree looks beautiful and is almost finished. Just look at that beautiful angel on the hall. Imagine you are a lovely shepherd watching over the sheep. This knot seems no different from any other. Then all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord is in the sky above you, telling you of the Savior's birth. 
you a shepherd, why did God send an angel to tell shepherds? Because, because the message that God had about the birth of Jesus was for all people, not just for the right, not just for the Jew, everyone. God chose his number one messenger to tell the lowest of all people in the world's eyes of his son's birth. God looks at the heart, not what the world looks at. Thank goodness. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were so afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be all people, for unto you this day in the city of David, a Savior which is Christ the Lord. Luke 10, 9-11. Our dream is beautiful. I won't change any. The angel was like a messenger of God. The angel told the good news of Jesus' birth. Wow, I didn't know, but what about all the other stuff that we put around the house? Well, let's talk about the hall. When we put some on our table. We see holly as decorations during the Christmas season, but do we really understand what holly stands for? The leaves represent the crown of thorns that were placed upon Jesus' head as he was being crucified. The berries symbolize the blood that he shed for us. He endured criticism, excruciating pain, and embarrassment, all for you and I. The next time you see a decoration with holly on it, remember what was done for you so that he could spend eternity with you. I know that I will. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, Matthew 27, 29. I'm That's amazing what he did for us. It makes me feel blessed to know him. He went through all that for me. He came to this earth in order to die for me and you. That's quite an amazing thing to think about during this Christmas season. That leads us to the wreath that we're going to hang up on the door. The wreath has its evergreen branches bent in a circle so that the ends touch having no beginning or end, just as there is no beginning or end of Jesus, eternal love for us. Just as the wreath looks the same throughout, it seems to not change. So he will always be the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13 8. I just love how it looks on our door. Yes, it really finishes off the look of the room. It's nice to know that he'll never change. I didn't realize that it had a meaning. That's a great reminder that even though we change or grow, he'll always be right there. Now what about the presents? Those can't have a meaning. Well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> These days, the world has forgotten the reason for Christmas. Most people seem to think that getting presents is the greatest thing about Christmas. Other people seem to think that presents have nothing to do with Christmas. Well, they're both wrong. The wise men came to visit Jesus as a young child and gave him presents. They have his gold. They gave him gold frankincense and myrrh. They offered him gold and <coughs> him hold as a king, paying him tribute, frankincense as God. For they honored God with the smoke of incense and myrrh. As a man that should die, the myrrh was honored by God, the smoke of incense and mirth. And as a man should die, the mirth was used in blaming dead bodies. These men, these wise men, saw this child and knew that he is a king in God, in God and that he would die for the sins of the world. How can it how can anyone with the knowledge know now that we have not, now not believe? The wise men went to the house. There they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their tre treasures. They gave him gold, incense, and myrrh. Matthew 2.11 I love this Christmas tree. Jesus is really the greatest gift to us all. He truly is. I never knew that the wasp gifts had meanings. What about the wrapping? That's just something we came up with, right? Yes and no. The bows and ribbons do have a special meaning that would be good for us to remember. Many 
many people spend hours wrapping all their presents during the Christmas time. They use ribbons, garland, and bows to make sure their presents are as beautiful as possible. What they don't realize is that is that the items that they use to complete the outside of the gift is more meaning than the actual gift inside. The bow ties our present with a beautiful ribbon, just as Jesus ties us as Christians together in his love. We, not, we may not be in the same family, but we are all in the family of God. Jesus is the ribbon that binds us together, and above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Colossians 3.14 I just thought the wrappings were to hide the presents inside. Yeah, I never thought about them having them on me. There's really a lot to think about. I guess I'll have to look at things differently. That's for sure. I never knew that all this stuff had meaning. People do a lot of crazy things at Christmas time with all this stuff. The parties, the gift giving, the busyness of this Christmas season. What we need to do is slow down. Enjoy every moment of it by remembering what the true meaning of Christmas is. Who wants to go make cookies? I know there's no meaning in a cookie. Oh, you'd be surprised. Making, cook making cookies is a favorite pastime for most families during the Christmas season. Cookie cutters are used to turn ordinary dough into edible masterpieces. God doesn't use cookie cutters when he creates each one of us. He makes, he makes every one of us so special and unique that he would have to break them all after just one use. He is the potter and we are his club. He wants to mold us into his masterpieces. We only need to be moldable and willing to follow his lead. Behold like clay in the potter's hand and so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Jeremiah 18, 6. I'll just talk about cookies. Make me hungry. Come on, let's go bake some cookies.
a last minute change. Phoebe was supposed to be here this morning, so Bell is stepping in. <laughs> you all know Harp the Herald Angels, just sing along with this. <laughs>